So, I mean, I came into the company first as a director, um, just after all the nonsense happened. Um, and I was, I was part of trying to find a solution with the board issues that were going on at the time. I was asked to, to be on the board by some investors. Um, and at the core, I'm a fixer. Um, so in my time on the board, and because we were interacting quite a lot with the company, uh, once we started finding the solution to the board issues, um, the board started sort of looking at me and saying, hey, wouldn't you like to actually maybe come and try and fix this thing? Um, so I was quite happily retired at the time. And uh, I must tell you, it's, it's such a great company from a brand perspective. It's such an iconic South African company. And to me, some of the solutions seemed like, I wouldn't call them obvious, but it looked like you know we, we knew what we would have to do to fix this and to turn it around. The, the long history of PPC had led to an element of complacency. Uh, we had to change our whole mindset around how we sell our products. We had to change our whole mindset around its business as usual. And um, it just appealed to my sense of being able to fix it, you know, which I believed I could. And so, in a sense, I, I couldn't say no. And so my retirement ended, and, and here I am a year later. Our, our vision is to be a world-class provider of materials and solutions in the basic services sector and to more than double our business every 10 years. Um, so this has got a lot of implications for us, one of which is, is that uh, we see Africa as a core place for us to expand and we see ourselves as an African business um, and therefore Africa is central to our strategy. We find in Africa the, the lessons that we learn are that, that we have to not be a South African company, we have to be an African company. When we, when we run businesses in these places, we run them as if it's a Zimbabwean business, a Botswana business, uh, a Rwandan business. And our objective is to, is to employ as many locals as we can and employ as few expats as we can. Um, so we, we, in Zimbabwe, for instance, we have no expats left. It's a completely Zimbabwean run business. Of course, it reports to the center, but we really, we drive them to be their own business and to put pressure on us and tell us what they believe should happen in their own region. So in that way we're going to be a truly African company and, and not really a South African company. So in South Africa there's an oversupply of cement at the moment with new competitors coming on and we accept that. It's a normal part of every market. Um, really what we seek to do is to diversify across the continent and in every market there'll be times when there's a shortage of cement and there'll be times when there's an oversupply of cement and you've got to make hay while the sun shines in the good times and in the tough times you've got to cut your cost base and in PPC we've got something going called the Profit Improvement Program and we, we're cutting a tremendous amount of costs out of our system but also finding ways to improve our profits and, and that comes to innovative products, a slightly wider product range. Um, so just looking for all the avenues in, in the business to, to make sure we can minimize the downside in South Africa while there's an overcapacity. But as South Africa grows, cement demand will grow and then very soon we'll be at an undercapacity situation. And in fact we're building a new, a new facility at our slurry operation called Slurry SK9. It's a 1.7 billion rand expansion of that facility and that'll come into the market in around 2019 which will be when we see um, an undercapacity situation in South Africa. So we've got to do the right thing between now and then, and then hopefully we'll be the ones bringing new capacity into the market next.